Hello again. I made a video about getting a new microphone and how excited I was about it and how I was going to make all sorts of videos and then I didn't make any. So here we are. Here's the first video. Uh, yes, it, having the new microphone does enable me to make these nice new videos, which I am pleased about. But I generally don't think about making videos when I start a project. And I've been doing a lot of adopts lately, which I don't think are very interesting for a person to watch. So I haven't had a lot of content to make videos of lately. But anyway, about this video. I got a comment asking how I blend and shade colors and do highlighting and stuff like that. And it made me think about my process. And I don't know if I've really shown how I shade and color and stuff. Recently, at least. So here's a video covering that. So the first thing that I do is I generally, the best way to do it, the, the way that I do it with most success is to cover the whole, the whole adopt, the whole character with a layer of gray and lower the opacity for the layer. So like, 80 90 ish so you could still see a little underneath but it's mostly covered up because you don't want to get distracted by the fur patterns and colors underneath and to base your shading off of those instead of the lighting itself after i color the character in gray i add my first shading and highlighting layer so i add a new layer i fill it in the whole layer with a color like a dark bluish grayish purple and then I lower the opacity of that layer to 50 around that doesn't matter it's arbitrary uh, you just need to be able to see what you're doing and then I subtract so I erase areas that I want light to be hitting the character generally I follow the same pattern I always have the same light source um, it's usually directly above the character like I mentioned just already I think I did and so I, I usually begin in the same places and have the highlighting and shading in these general places. So it doesn't really matter where you start. Sometimes I start at the torso. Sometimes, like in here, I'm going to start at the face. I do the forehead and the muzzle, and then I leave a little dark space under the eyes and in between the eyes. I do the ears. I do the top of the neck where the light's hitting it from above, and uh, the shoulders, the back then the torso, then the thigh, maybe the top of the tail. Generally just the, the upper parts of the character are what I erase and have light hitting. Stuff like this, what I'm doing now is for just muscle definition, showing where the anatomy is. One thing that I think is kind of important when you're shading is to think about reflections. And so... I think shading is kind of helpful to think about like a sandwich. You have two lights with a dark space in between. So for example, with this, I have light hitting the torso and then it gets dark as it fades into the shadows. And then underneath you have a reflection of the ground because light's hitting the ground as well. And the light from the ground reflects upwards back into the character. And so the light hitting the bottom of the stomach should be not as light as the light hitting directly from above. But it makes it more realistic to have that kind of reflective lighting. So on the edges of the character, after you have a dark space in a character, it's nice to have light again. So the next thing that I like to do after I've had this basic layer of shading is I make another one. Using a similar color, whatever, it doesn't matter, another dark color, I like to go around and kind of do highlights of the sketch. And by highlight, I mean draw over parts of the sketch to make it stand out more. So I like to add heavier shading to certain areas of the body on a separate layer. I think it helps make parts of the body stick out better because it, it's hard to see. So I'm adding definition.
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the first highlighting layer. There are going to be two. So the first layer is going to be overlay. That's what I'm going to change the setting to. And I'm going to change the opacity of that down to like 40%, something kind of lower. And then I, I do the opposite of what I did before. And so I'm now doing addition. So I'm directly adding on the color. I'm not erasing it to have it appear because I don't want the whole thing to be covered in light. I only want light to be hitting certain parts of the body. But for shadows, shadows are everywhere. The light is the only thing keeping them from being in shadow. So for highlighting, you're just going to manually go through. I'm going to, I guess this is what I do. I manually go through and pick out areas that I want to stand out more, to have more light hitting them and to be more detailed. The areas that are going to be in shadow shouldn't have as much detail as the rest of the character. This is kind of an issue that I have myself. I just over detail. But really, the areas that have the most light hitting them should have the most fur detail and the texture. After all that's done, I remove that basic gray layer that I put over the character to hide the, the colors and fur. And then I make a new layer, a new overlay layer, and I turn the opacity down on that to like 30 or 40. And I go over the fur and I kind of try to make it shiny. I go over the arms, the legs, the neck, sometimes parts of the face, and I do these kind of circular curvy lines. And it doesn't look good with every drawing. And I don't do it for every drawing, but it's fun. And maybe you could try it and see if you like the effect it gives too. All it does is add a little shiny sheen to the fur. The final thing I do is I I go in and I adjust the opacity of each layer to make it... I don't want to make the character too contrasted by having too much shadow. I, I don't want them to be too dark. So I go in, I usually lower the multiply layer down so it's less dark. And I do the same with the highlights to make it less extreme. That kind of thing. And then I'm done. So maybe I'll do another example. So let's do it with this one. Let's make his color something really uninteresting, just like a gradient. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. There, here's the wolf. So first thing I do, add in Fill the whole thing with a color, set it to multiply, bring the multiply layer down to like 50%, and then erase away the areas you want there to be light hitting them. For me, the light is always at the top of them for references and adopts and stuff like that. So same formula, I'm doing the back, top of the torso, thighs, Forehead. Do the arm muscles, elbows. All of this shading, all of this figuring it out is just experimenting, seeing what you like the look of yourself. 
we all have our own ways of doing it. I added in the second multiply layer. I'm going around and defining the anatomy a little more, trying to add a little more depth. Now I'm going to add in that first highlighting layer and set it to overlay, lower the opacity, and go over the areas where I think the light is hitting it the most and where I'm going to want to detail the fur the most in these areas. I don't follow these rules all the time. I wish I did. I wish I followed my rules as much as I advertise, but sometimes I, I add fur all over the place and it's a huge mess. Sometimes I add way too many muscles, but it's fun. It's fun to draw different muscles and try stuff out. You're drawing, your shading and highlighting doesn't have to be perfect. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Go, go more simple, if anything. Now I'm going to add the second overlay layer with the shiny fur. It doesn't always look good. That's why I save it for last. Sometimes I save it for after I've done all the texturing after all this. I think it's a nice little quality that it adds to it, but you don't have to do it. I don't always do it. Try weird stuff with it. Try different shapes and different strokes of the brush and have fun. See, what, see whatever works for you, whatever you like. This technique is actually pretty good for doing like kind of opalescent, shiny, scarab kind of fur. I did this for my firefly painting. I went over it. It was a very dark character. It was like basically just black, black, black. And so I had to lighten it up a lot. And then I did an overlay layer over the areas where I was imagining fur would be shiniest. And so it's great for stuff like that. It's great for being shiny. And then that's it. Right now I'm going under and coloring underneath the multiply and uh, overlay layers just to make this character have a little more color in it. This is kind of the same process for how to make a base. I follow these same steps and instead on the multiply layer I do all the texturing there. So you can color underneath it just like this. So that's basically it. There are a few steps. You first color the whole thing in gray. 
and then you add your first multiply layer usually a dark kind of I usually do a bluish purple color then you I usually add on a second multiply layer to go around and draw over the anatomy a little more to make it more clear when I get to painting the fur and then you add your first overlay layer you go over the parts you paint in the parts that are going to have the most highlights and then you make another overlay layer and if you want shiny fur you do that and then you're done then after that I'll go in and I'll get my brushes and I'll texture it I don't really know if this has been helpful my thoughts are kind of scattered and all over the place but I just wanted to show you how I do my process maybe it'll help someone out there maybe it'll help you see how I do my art I don't know that's it. See you in another 800 years.